welcome to Central Coast Newspapers Video News. My name's Jackie Pearson and today I'm very pleased to introduce you to Mr John Asquith. Hello. Hello Jackie. How Recently you made an OAM. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yes. How did that very feel? Proud. Oh look, uh, immensely proud. The family, um, you know, were overjoyed uh, because uh, behind, you know, your family suffers with a lot of these things, have to, uh, as one's away for meetings. Mm -hmm. And I've been in the conservation movement for pretty well 50 years now. You know, um, started when I was about 21 in the campaign for Mile Lakes National Park, so. Okay. A long because and ragged you, history. <laughs> you have, um, your professional history is engineering? engineering that's yeah. right. So yes. why were you attracted to conservation and environmental um, issues? Look, I was a bushwalker back in that era and uh, you know as again my qualifications and that uh, engineering uh, as is teaching and nursing and a lot of those professions are very much about you know looking at the public interest and the wider interests of our community and being a bushwalker why wouldn't you fall in love with Australia's environment and uh, you know so many magnificent national parks mm -hmm. natural places going camping with the family that's a part of every Australian's Life. DNA. DNA. And we're <laughs> damn lucky to have it. There's no doubt about it. So um, you're chairman of the Community Environment Network, which is yep. a Central Coast organisation. Tell us yep. about how um, Community Environment Network came about. Right. Yes. Uh, look, in 97, there was a strong push for an environmental network on the coast. And I, have, I actually avoided getting involved. I thought, the last thing I need is another job. So <laughs> I, I didn't go to their meetings. They sent me, keep sending me stuff. But a real credit to the people who were involved. Our Mayor Jane was one of the people involved then, as was uh, Steve Rowe. He was a councillor on Gosford Council. And uh, they, they started held, held a forum at the Leagues Club. Now, 500 people showed up for the, those forums. I think 700 came to the next forum. Wow. So really showed a, a strong desire to protect the environment of the Central Coast, to work together and to get such massive uh, public support uh, is, is how CN came about. And um, so CN involves itself in many things, but our mission is to promote sustainability and to p oppose threats to it. So, okay, yep. promote sustainability and oppose threats to it. Yep. So on that basis, what do you what does the Community Environment Network see as the key issues currently facing the yep. Central Coast? Now Well, I think just the gov the governance side of it. Um, so certainly Oh, that's interesting. I didn't expect you to say that. Oh yeah. Look, um, having 15 councillors cover an area that was previously covered by 20 councillors and the and the range and the you know the distance if you drive from Woi Woi up to the bottom edge of Catherine Absolutely. Hill Bay, yeah, must be an hour and a half drive I would think at least. You know, so I think we're the geographic size of um, the Australian Capital Territory. Yep, and we have the population of um, the Northern Territory. Yes, we would. Yeah, about, probably bigger than that. Which I think is they're about a quarter of a million. Huge, isn't it? Yeah, mm. that's right. It's a massive area. And, and that, a lot of those places don't have the development pressure that we do. You know, we have a huge development pressure along the coast. So east of the freeway is where all the pressure is. Uh, I guess the big issues for CN is good planning, uh, water, because water covers many elements from, you know, the quality of our oceans, the, you know, cleanliness of the beaches, etc., mm -hmm. through to the water that comes down our rivers, goes through the dams. Um, through to the, the land and the riparian areas around those, those waterways because that eventually all makes its way through to either Tugra Lakes or the Brisbane waters. So our, our remit, I guess, is very broad, being from marine environments through to land and water-based mm. environments. Yep. But the, the thing that is really apparent is the need for good planning and we see too much um, desire or... Uh, to take shortcuts and the Central Coast has suffered from that for decades and it's certainly still suffering from it. That's, that's a huge remit um, and, and one of the most interesting things about what you've just said is that there is um, a clear agenda from the current state government yep. 
to um, significantly increase the population of the Central Coast. That's right. Open up a lot more land for residential development. Yep. And um, the indication is that a, even a change of government in Macquarie Street would not see that change. Mm -hmm. What's that sort of pressure going to look like for our environment and, and how um, can the community make yep. sure the balance is, is right. right? Yeah, look very much so. That is an incredible pressure on, on the local area. So th the first thing the community needs is to be able to maintain a, vo a voice in that development. Now the current rules that are going to be applied around the Gosford CBD are going to cut out the local community entirely. It'll be entirely handled with, by bureaucrats. There won't be any level of uh, elected officials involved. There won't even be elected officials at a state level who are in the process. So we, we are going to be... Uh, and do you see that as um, a precursor? Because um, it's, it's goal one. In, in a very big regional plan. Yep. Do you see the pattern um, that's being put in place in Gosford CD, CBD as a bit of a prototype for how... Um, yep, very much so. Yep. Really? I think, oh yeah, I think it's only a matter of time till that model, if it gets up, will be rolled out across the central coast, particularly east of the freeway. So weren't we told though that state environmental planning policies weren't weren't a good way to do planning and that this government this state government was all about devolving yes, controls yes. back and to uh, council? You know, that was it part three A was, you know, one of the things the government got elected on, getting rid of part three yeah. A and now we're back with part three A in the C B D. Okay. Know? So and, and what happens by virtue of the of the local community get ex getting excluded you start to find there's all sorts of exemptions made. So, for example, how close you can develop, say, to the, the, the waterfront. Yeah. Very significant in terms of if you don't have those working salt marshes and waterfront and beaches, they're all helping to clean our water, water. and protect our waterways. You know? right. So as development pressure comes on to, oh, wow, you know, I want to sell uh, mega, uh, mega million dollar sort of apartments on the water or in the water, over the water, all of that is, is degrading the environment, the marine, uh, the marine or the uh, estuary environment. So I, um, I want to come back to, yep. to talk about the marine environment with you because I know that, yep. that you're involved with the Marine Discovery Centre and, and you've got some strong opinions about the Marine Park proposal. Yeah, sure. um, we've covered off Gosford CBD uh, and, and the regional plan. Um, w what about, I, I mean, we've spoken a lot about water. Yep. Let, let's start beyond the shoreline. You've um, got some opinions about the management of the only channel in and out of Brisbane Water, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I certainly do. And I'm, I'm uh, booking the sand that's in that channel, whether it's whether it's up near Wagstaff or down where the current deposit is off Little Box Head, yep. is, is continually moving. moving. And, and it moves in roughly a figure of eight, is how the scientists have explained it to me. Right? Okay, that's interesting. And it moves from all of that. Yep. Now, where that sand comes from initially is off Adelong Beach. Right. Right, so it comes off the western shore, gets mm -hmm. cut out by the out, outgoing tides, right? And, and, and gets into that system of moving around, right? Up. So it's built up, up, up at Wagstaff and it's built up off Little Lobster Beach. If you, if you don't put that sand back, when you dig the channel out, if you don't put that sand back on Edelong Beach, nature will still take it off of Edelong Beach, right? So we live in a, in a continually changing and dynamic environment. Nothing static around us, whether it's the air, the sea or whatever. So you're making me think that it wouldn't matter how many millions of dollars we spent on dredging. It'll, it'll be back there. It's, it's, so it's then part what, of a process. The solution, so, well, the, the solution is not to make it worse. Ah. Because the estuary management plan for Brisbane Waters recognised that, that this pattern exists. So what we've got to do is keep the channel navigable Right, so we mm. uh, the pinch spots. Yeah, we look at we uh, uh, we uh, dig that out, but what we've got to do is put it back on Ed Long Beach. So, so we participate in the figure eight. We work with nature. Right. Right, and all and, and we won't we won't have erosion at Ed Long Beach because we're putting the sand back there where it came from. Okay. Right, and we'll so have our channel. So are you being heard? 
Well, I've certainly uh, told a number of people, I've told our MPs, I've told council about this. And, and look, the council has good scientists working for them, but they get over, overpowered by people with dogmatic views who have no expertise in the area whatsoever, right? Now, the second thing that's going on on these beaches, and Ocean Beach is one mm. that I've looked at closely, Ocean Beach is, a, you know, it gets cut away in storms, as yeah. all beaches along the New South Wales coast do. Yeah. And the thing that saves them is the, the dune vegetation behind them, because that slows the, the cutout during a big storm. Right. That water get that sand gets taken offshore, and that's the bar you see sitting off a beach. That's the sand that's been taken off the dunes and put out there. Right. Again, it's part of a circular system. Right. So on? you've got to put it back. You've got to put it back. Now right. there are ways of doing that. You you know they involve using machinery if you want to accelerate it. So that sand during normal you know oceans will get slowly brought back into the near sh into the intertidal zone. So what you do is beach, beach scraping, it's called, where that sand, because yeah. it's been delivered by the water, is pushed up the beach to the dune, because to get from there to the dune, it's got to rely on the wind. Now, wind is very weak compared to water, right? Huh? Water's powerful, wind is nowhere near as strong. So they, you scrape that sand, push it up there, and nature will use water to take a bit more of that offshore sand and dump it there. So six months later, you come back and you push it up there. Okay. So within a year or two, you'll restore that dune. And um, it sounds like we need almost annual dredging of those pinch spots. That's it. And then okay. it'd be a, then it'd be a hundred thousand dollar job, and everyone would have navigation. Nature would play okay. games with the sand. Fantastic. Well, I hope you've got a solution for the next conundrum because <laughs> that sounds like a pretty oh good dear. one for the dredging. Yep. Um, b back to the issue of, of freeing up land for residential development, which yep. is, is more um, of an issue in the northern parts of the new local government area than yep. in the southern parts. Um, and the Biodiversity Conservation Act, which is a new piece of New South Wales legislation yep. that um, I've seen in practice a couple of times because uh, the state government has kindly made um, some areas within the Central Coast fast track test cases under the new law. Yeah. Um, and what I've seen both with the Kangiangi train maintenance facility and also um, more recently with a big new um, 200 plus residential lot um, subdivision at Hamlin Terrace, uh, sorry, Glenning Valley, no, no, Hamlin Terrace, excuse me, yeah. is um, that in order to clear um, habitat of, of endangered species and, and highly vulnerable species, mm. um, a developer can offset that clearing with um, land, so biobanked land, um, on the Manning River or um, northern New South Wales or Upper Hunter Valley. Mm. So the Central Coast loses that mm. bushland. Yep. Um, where does that stop? Do we well, end up looking like Park Lee by the sea? Yeah, I, I, I think we do if we, if we don't change that system. Look, it, it's based on a false premise, and that is that you can commodify our environment, yep. right? Which has happened with water. You know, water's commodified, yes. land is commodified, you can buy and sell land fairly freely, you know, and water. But how do you do that with our environment, with the species, the richness of species which are based on the soils and the water? You know, it's, it's, it's based on a ridiculous proposition, mm. but it's attempting to meet uh, an almost overwhelming pressure from population and therefore from developers. So and, and what's, what's, what's the John Asquith solution? Well, the answer to it is, is to be... Um, First off, when you protect something, you protect it. So if we protect wetlands, we make sure that they're part of our national park system or the equivalent, right. so we keep them. So, right. the, so the next time a cowboy is elected somewhere or does a deal or what, some department needs money, they can't say, oh, we'll just rezone this and sell it off on the slide. So we've got to protect the things that are really important to us. And we've so got to make an E2 or an E3? Should be absolutely verboten whereas as you know for development but whereas what we've got 
is we've seen, and Kangi Engi is a classic case, E2 land that was purchased to protect and its, its incredible wetland values. And as we found out, Marnie's uh, toadlet was there. Yeah. One of only three locations in New South Wales where it's known to have occurred. It's gone. So one, one of those three is gone. Now, how can a biodiversity uh, you know, strategy allow for, the, you know, for one site of a, of a species that only exists on three sites? It, 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 is, it is a nonsensical proposition that cannot possibly be sustainable in the long term. But it's our law. It is. <laughs> so where do we go from there? Well, really, uh, I guess from CN's point of view, which is all I can really talk about, yes. CN will certainly always keep pushing for pushing the science, the uh, you know, trying to keep a, a, an eye on these things and making the case. But at the end of the day, it does need political will to do it, mm. and and the the political will is weakened by developer donations. It's weakened by you know, job, need for jobs, and, and we all want a job. Uh, so there are many forces at play, but what we've got to do is work out the most valuable areas we've got and permanently protect them. Not say, oh, they're protected, and then in 10 years' time say, oh, well, we've got another, another 100,000 people coming up. That's going to go. I think the second thing is we really need to build in this message of sustainability. Many of the housing, uh, much of the housing and the development that's happening is not even looking at sustainability. And there's a classic case on Anderson Road at the moment where yeah. the site has been completely cleared despite OEH looking at the site and, and determining that certain areas should be protected, right? It's uh, gone. It's gone. Now, how did that happen? It happens because there are a number of stages in the development process. In Gateway, OEH gets a say. When the DA's awarded and, and signed off, OEH gets no say. They have no legislative role. So here, when they first looked at it, they've said these species need to be protected, this bit and this bit. Come down to the DA stage, the developer gets another consultant in. That consultant says it's not regionally significant. And this has happened a number of times on the Central Coast. Doesn't go back to OEH to say, oh, this guy says it's not regionally significant. They never see it again. They've got no legislative role in it anymore. So that gets accepted, and that's what happened in that place, in that case, along with a number of other sites on the central coast, and through it goes. The stuff gets, gets everything's gotten cleared there. Well, um, I thank you for your expertise, and I thank you for your vigilance, and we could certainly talk all day. Oh. We must have you back. <laughs> We're going to have you back thank to you talk about much. marine parks, but thank you so much for your time, John. Sure, my pleasure.